I want to look at these three tools, the freehand tools. I'm going to start by looking at the freehand line tool. I can see that a lot of people are going to look at the freehand tools and think, yeah, but that's only for people who've got graphics tablets. I don't have a graphics tablet. So why would I need those? Now, I know there's an awful lot of you out there who do quilting. And then there's a lot of free motion embroiderers. And I'm also very aware of the perception amongst the free motion embroiderers that digitized designs are somehow inferior because the machine does it all. Well, I was a free motion embroiderer up until I got smacked in the face with Bell's palsy, quite literally. And I found that I couldn't really see where my needle was in relationship to my fingers guiding the hoop. Because I'm a very old fashioned free motion embroiderer. I started when I was 15 and I was taught to use a hoop. Because we didn't have stabilizers and so you had to have a taut fabric. And the only way you could get that was if you used a wooden embroidery hoop. And we had to manipulate that hoop with our hands. Now one of the joys of getting older is you get stiff fingers. And I've got arthritis now in both hands, in every joint of my fingers, and in particular my thumb. So manipulating the hoop became a little awkward for me, if not painful. I got hold of a graphics tablet when I first got my original software in 96. Yes, it was good, but you had a couple of little buttons on it, one for a left mouse click, one for a right mouse click, and that ripped my finger joints apart. Now, modern graphic pens, I don't think, have the buttons on, but I haven't used one now in, oh, six, seven years. I simply couldn't continue with them, and I went over to a mouse. And of course, when you digitize, you use, in this program, left and right mouse keys. Which meant, if I was doing a design like this, I'd have to make a lot of left and right mouse keys. Well, on a short period, as I say, that wasn't too bad, but my hands would ache. If I was digitizing for any length of time, not only would they ache unmercifully, they'd be swollen, and I'd find the next day that they were too uncomfortable to digitize and I longed for a freehand tool but we didn't have one. I see the potential for the freehand tools for quilters, for free motion embroiderers who like the look of free motion work but they want a similar f effect in the stitching as you get when you're doing free motion embroidery and they've got it in these tools. now. The freehand line is like a pen, and you use it like a pen. You put your nib down, and you draw. So let me show you what I mean. I just want to put a guideline in here, because I want my two ends to be identical. There we go, that end and that end. And I'm going to blow the screen up, and I've already talked far too much. And I'm going to pick up the line tool. There it is. Now, if you look up here, once you've picked the tool on any one of these three, you get something called smoothing. Now, my smoothing at the moment is up at 71%. I'm going to drop that, and I'm going to put it down to, we'll say, 10%. And I'm just going to draw a squiggle. No, I'll actually draw a line and then I'll move it out of the way. I hold down my left mouse key and I guide my mouse around my shape. Now, I don't have to be deadly accurate. I can be more accurate by using my left and right mouse keys. But, let me show you, even if I don't quite stay on the line, 
see? And I'm going to come as far as here. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to tell that enter. So now I've got a line. Right. I can see you sitting there now saying bully for you, but look at it. You're nowhere near the, your marks. I'm going to highlight that line. I've now highlighted it. And I'm going to go into object reshape. Look at all those nodes. There are millions of them. That would drive me insane. So I'm going to tell that stop. And I'm going to move that shape out of the way. And you can see my line is a wee bit erratic, isn't it? I didn't do it deliberately erratic. I didn't have to. I've picked the tool up again. I come back up here to the toolbar. We've got the smoothing toolbar. I've got it on 10%. I'm going to increase that to 60%. And I'm going to show you something over here. Look at that circle with the cross in the middle. I hope you can see it. I really do. Here it shows that cursor. That's the guide. Now, I've also got a vision problem. Look what's happened to my guide. I've put a circle around it. I can put another circle around that. It makes that guide even easier to see. So if, like me, you do have a problem with your eyesight, this is so much easier to see than that silly little cursor that's down there. And I'm going to put this down for one for a moment. I'm going to left mouse click. I'm supposed to hold my left mouse button down and I forgot. Come down to this point. Turn the corner. Come up. Now I'm not trying to be any more careful than I was with the last one. As you can see, I'm still coming off my lines a bit. I could be far more accurate using the left and right mouse keys, but my fingers would ache like crazy after a short while. And I'm going to take that up there. And I'm going to enter it. This time, I've highlighted it. Look how many nodes I've got. If I compare it to this one, and I can't have them both going together, unfortunately. Look at how many nodes there are on that one. That was down at 10. By using smoothing, you get rid of all the excessive nodes. Now, I've come off my line in a few places. Easy. Move my line where it's supposed to be. I'm not making my hands stiff. I'm not making them swell. Having to continuously use the left and right mouse buttons. And I've always loved the way that MBX uses the left and right mouse clicks because it did allow me to be so extremely accurate in my load laying. I think I should have said node laying there, but it sounded like load laying. Okay. Now, those are everybody's accurate as I could do if I actually did it manually with left and right mouse clicks. 
Now, do I need that node there? Well, I'm going to delete it and say no. And then I'm just going to generally move these around a little bit to get that line exactly where I want it. And if I want to, I can insert another node. But I've got a very nice, neatly laid line. But you saw I was no more accurate laying these than I was on this one. I'm going to tell that stop. I'm going to hide the graphic for a moment. And put my two shapes together. Look! Smoothing of 10%, smoothing of 60%. number of nodes, just enough to get the shape that I want. Number of nodes, enough to give me an extreme headache trying to see and thin all these nodes down. Now I get a line similar to this in another program that I own and use. It doesn't have the smoothing function. I'm not using a graphics tablet and a graphics pen. I'm using a mouse with a left and right mouse button and a scroll button. And I'm actually handicapped today because I didn't program my mouse to give me my scroll button in the center as an enter key, which is how I normally use it, because I hate the keyboard. I can now create myself a whole pile of patterns accurately and rapidly to make patterns to run down sashing for quilts.